Hey, my name's Kel Gortrout. Welcome back to this video. Today's gonna be... My eyes twitching already. Oh God. <laughs> Today's gonna be interesting. Wow, it really is twitching. In light of recent events, I've been wanting to make a video on the topic of choice, I guess. I did a video in the past. It was called the Anti-Abortion Maternity Ranch. That one's a wild ride if you want to watch that. It definitely centers more around like evangelicals and their approach to choice or the lack thereof. And this video is going to be different though. This video is definitely going to be more secular. But anyways, I've been wanting to make another video on the topic because this has been on my mind, obviously. But I wasn't really sure how to approach it. And I had some other projects I was working on. So I was like, you know, just wait and see. And then the other day I was watching this video by Ethan is online. Ethan is amazing. Please go follow Ethan if you don't already. You probably Probably do. But he makes a lot of great videos about like just weird people he finds online and he has great arguments. The video that I was watching was called Girl Ben Shapiro. Wait, what did he, sorry, what did he call it? Ben Shapiro made a fake channel to lie to you. It's called the comment section with Brett Cooper and it's terrible. And at the very end of the video, she says all sorts of dumb reactionary stuff in the video, but at the very end of the video, she said something about like the abortion debate. And I had this like light bulb moment where I was like, this is the one I'm gonna find you know, the full video where she's talking about this. And we're going to talk about it together and we're going to discuss the issue of abortion and the issue of being anti-choice, uh, which is a real fucked up way to be. I don't want this intro to get too long, but before we start, I just want to say that I am 100% pro-choice. I'll talk about my arguments and reasons why in this video. But if you disagree with me, that's okay, because I support your right to choose what you do with your body. And I would really like it if you could respect other people's bodily autonomy. I'm going to try my best to bring up some newer points in this video. Obviously, I'm not the first one to think of this or anything. But, you know, we hear a lot of the same pro-choice arguments over and over again. For example, uh, I think it's extremely valid when people bring up trauma, essay, other, you know, controversial and terrible, terrible things, ways in which people can become pregnant as a defense for why people, why, why we should preserve our uh, access to abortion. I think that's extremely important. However, that's not what I'm going to be bringing up in this video today. And it's not to downplay that situation. It's rather to highlight that uh, a huge percentage of people out there that do get abortions don't get them because, you know, something terrible happened. Rather, this is going to be kind of from the point of view of someone needs to get one just because. Just because the fucking vibe was off. Just because it's not their year. Not their year to get pregnant. Because it is extremely important to preserve like emergency abortions, of course. But I also think it's extremely important to just preserve abortions for any fucking reason. You don't have to agree with me, but we are going to go and we're going to find a video. I have not watched a single second of Brett Cooper except for what was in Ethan's video. I'm going to type in Brett Cooper abortion. This pro-abortion argument is cringe. Okay, sure. I hear a lot of pro-lifers um, say that life begins at conception. Mm -hmm. So my poster reads, life begins when you understand living women matter more than potential babies. Wait, what science did I deny, Darby? Oh. Um, okay, real quick, I'm gonna interject. You can talk about abortion from a scientific perspective if you want. But in my opinion, that isn't necessarily as important as bodily autonomy. <laughs> like, it just isn't. So you could sit here for literally forever and argue with a, a panel of biologists, and you could sit there and talk to them about when life begins and when it is viable and all this stuff. So for the sake of argument, let's just say life begins the second the little egg and the sperm touch. Just, that's a baby right there. It is, it is a fetus. It's a fucking cluster of cells. But let's just say it has the fucking soul of a baby or whatever. Even if that is the case, why would you make someone do it if they don't want to do it? And the only, the only reason why, if you break it down like that, is because they want to punish people. Like sex is the crime and pregnancy is the punishment. And to me, it really says a lot about how conservative people view 
sex and pregnancy. And it really sucks to frame it as a punishment because, you know, I've got two kids and they're beautiful and they're amazing. And sometimes they give me really bad headaches because they're a lot. Even on my worst day, they're about to give me a panic attack. The house is a mess. They're screaming. They're fighting. All this stuff. I would die for them. And to say that those two cute little goblins are my punishment is so crude and awful. And I don't know why conservatives with their fucking gaggles of children would want to view parenthood or, or pregnancy as a form of punishment. Pregnancy should either be something that you want completely, this blessing, this amazing thing, or you shouldn't do it. Like, and it should be a totally accessible choice to not do it. Why would we want to have a bunch of unwanted pregnancies? Answer that question for me. Give me one fucking reason. And if your reason is because it is murder, if you care so much about their fucking lives, act like it. Because every other policy that conservatives have is anti-life. Every single thing they do is not only anti-science, but it is completely sadistically terrible towards human life. You're worried about these fetuses dying, but you literally don't give two shits about other people that die. Like the 18 year olds you send to war for oil barons or whatever the fuck they're fighting for. You don't care about the people who live outside because they can't afford a home. You don't care about harm reduction when it comes to drug overdoses. You don't care about any of that. You don't care about destigmatizing certain things so that we can reduce the suicide rate. You don't care about life. You care about punishing pregnant people. Look at the foster care system. Look at the school systems. Look at all this stuff. And I am speaking from an American-centric point of view. Both Brett and I live in America, and this is currently uh, an issue in America because our Supreme Court is doing some shit. If you want an, a point of view that is about science, and if you want a point of view that isn't American, Rachel Oates just posted a really good video. I will link it. And she gets way more into the science stuff, which I will not. I'm not a scientist. I'm not qualified to talk about these things beyond reading a couple articles. I can't talk about biology. Um, and I don't need to because I don't think that you need to argue about science when we're talking about abortion. I just don't. It's just not necessary. It's a logical issue. It's a moral issue. But you don't have to be I here. need you to tell me what science, you just made an accusation that I denied science. What science did I deny? That it's a child inside of you. It is a clump of cells when you I'm have a clump of cells. What makes me different? When you're arguing like this theoretical science stuff, people can just like move the goalposts around. Like she said, I'm a clump of cells. Not every clump of cells is the same. And I think that that's the thing is that all these things, life, personhood, these a lot of these things are kind of more like social constructs. And so when you try to apply science to them, it just gets kind of ugly. At the end of the day, if a person does not want a baby, why should they grow it inside them for nearly 10 months? I know we talk about pregnancy being a nine month thing. I've had two babies. It's a 10 month thing. It takes so fucking, that's almost a year. If you got pregnant today, you probably wouldn't have your baby until like February or March of next year. Talking about it from a scientific perspective can be somewhat valuable, but it, I just don't think it's as valuable as people think it is. Kind of like when people talk about uh, being gay and then uh, conservatives bring up like, like science. So, oh, well, you know, two gay men can't reproduce. Okay, true, but like, does that have anything to do with this? They love each other. It also bothers me just as, as much when people talk about these things framed in terms of the Constitution or in terms of the Bible. When they talk about it in terms of the Constitution, I could not give two smaller, tinier, rock-hard shits about it. Who fucking cares what the Constitution says? The Constitution sucks. It's been amended, like, what is it? How many? 33. 33 times that we've had to go through this arduous process of fixing some of the major errors that they made, okay? So I don't necessarily think that the law and the constitution are metrics we should go by. Some like old rich dudes fucking wrote it, what was it, 300 years ago or something? Don't care. Didn't ask. Also, when people frame this argument in terms of the Bible, again, I don't care. That's not where I receive my morality from. Just be careful with the science argument. If you're gonna, if you're gonna get up and do this, you might look stupid. I just want to point out 
what this is, because I don't know if I actually uh, explain this. Brett Cooper has a YouTube channel. She looks like a little YouTuber, like a, like a girl that sits in her room and talks to a camera and has a, a little microphone, you know? Just like a regular person. Um, she's not. This is all paid for and created by the Daily Wire. And while I'm sure Brett believes what she's saying, these did not come from her. She's being given direction as to what to say by the Daily Wire, which is run by Ben Shapiro. There's other shows on it like the Tim Cast with Tim Pool. Just the worst shit on the internet. Brett, if you're watching this, you're better than this, okay? Even though you do look a little bit like Ben Shapiro, you are a beautiful woman, and I can tell by your personality, at least the personality you, you portray on here, that you're an extremely principled and bold person, and I really respect that about you. However, the Daily Wire, they will only let you continue so far as you agree with them. If you ever branch out, if you ever have a difference of opinion, you will not be allowed to express that on here. I think that you're smarter than this. And I think you know that you're doing some manipulation with with this because it's pretty like palpable. It's pretty obvious. This is lame. This sucks. Okay. Ben Shapiro? Are you kidding me? Ben Shapiro's entire fucking career died like five years ago. So let's see. Now we let's watch one of her longer ones. Oh, there's two right here. There's you have to see this insane pro-abortion protester and leftist meltdown. I'm going to click leftist meltdown because I'm not concerned with what one insane pro-abortion protester does. That's that person's fucking imperative. I do care about what people have to say about overturning Roe v. Wade. So let's get into that. And in case you are from afar, or even if you're an American, you don't really know what the Roe v. Wade thing is. I'm not like a fucking legal scholar or anything, but basically our pieces of shit in, in the Supreme Court uh, are very undemocratically going to overturn Roe v. Wade, which set the legal precedent for us to have access to abortion. Since Roe v. Wade, there have been decades where Democrats or really anybody could have codified that into law and making it federal law that people have access to abortion, no matter what. But instead, they never fucking did it. And now it's going to be up to the states to decide. Unlike our sloth-like fucking Democrat leaders who refuse to just take any type of action, the Republican leaders all over the, all over the country are already ready to go with their crazy ass bills that are going to do things like criminalize abortion. They could even criminalize miscarriages at a certain point. It's just really scary. So let's watch the leftist meltdown. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. Last night was just a big night on the internet. Politico broke the news that someone had leaked a draft from a Supreme court opinion and it looks like they're going to overturn roe v wade oh we got the screaming lib meme my thing is the right can't meme but the leftist has shitty audio <laughs> the right has good audio because they're backed by like oil companies or whatever you know now, obviously it's a draft and a supreme court draft has never ever been leaked before. It, this is incredibly suspicious. It has dangerous ramifications. A lot of people are thinking that this was intentional, that whoever leaked it is part of a bigger plan to use intimidation tactics to keep the judges from ruling in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. <laughs> this was all unfolding as the Met Gala was going on. And if you don't know, at the Met Gala, you're not allowed to have phones. They started that, I think, in 2017 or something like that. But you're not don't allowed care. to take pictures. You're not allowed to have phones in there or anything like that. None of this so, matters. Hypothetically, the celebrities and the politicians and all the elites inside had no idea that this was going on. The fact that all of these like billion What do I why do why would I ever fucking care what a celebrity does or says or thinks? Especially while they're attending the Met Gala. And I know that Brett also doesn't care what celebrities think. So why is this framed like this? Now, you're going to notice everybody starts talking about women's rights. When did we figure out what a woman was? When did you figure out that definition? I thought that we were bleeders and birthing people. And suddenly it's like, you are erasing women. Yeah, we've been saying that for different reasons for the last two, three years. Glad you brought that up, Brett. People have been having this conversation for a very long time. This is an old conversation. And in the past, this has been what we would call a women's issue. However, these days, a lot of people are trying to instead frame this as an issue for people in general. 
And it is because whether or not you're including trans people, non-binary people, anybody in the mix here, abortion does affect everybody. It affects people that are pregnant. It affects people that got someone pregnant. So yeah, I think that calling it a women's issue is a bit antiquated. I think that maybe we should just drop that language. But I think Brett nitpicking over the language is just being done in bad faith because she doesn't want to apply the standard. She wants other people to be ideologically consistent while continuing to strip them of their rights. She doesn't actually care. She's trying to use it against the entire movement. <laughs> okay? She's trying to use a tweet where someone said women's instead of just people's rights. She's trying to use that as like a reason why we shouldn't be allowed to have abortions. Okay. To figure out where I can move that isn't on the fast track to the handmaid's tail. Why is their typical response always, oh, I'm leaving. I'm moving to Canada. I'm leaving Twitter. Uh, okay. What about all the fucking parlor fucks? I think conservatives also pull that. I don't agree with just leaving, but that's someone else's choice. You seem to have a lot of problems with people ha like just choosing things, Brett. And just like that, the current thing has changed. We went from Ukraine to women's pink hats and abortion rights. Yeah, sometimes something new happens in the world. Like we are literally puppets in their scheme. They are telling us what to think and what to care about. Do you know anything about being a puppet in someone's scheme and talking about what they tell you to talk about? Libs of TikTok did what she does best and put together a mashup for us. And a woman's issue and it goes beyond anything you can ever imagine the societal implications of this are going to be insane and we're going back into a handmaid's tale society here the first part of what she said is true that um you know the societal implications are insane i don't know about the handmaid's tale shit i mean at a certain point libs talking about handmaid's tale is like the conservatives doing the 1984 thing a little bit it's true, though. There are a lot of really scary themes and stuff in Hand Handmaid's Tale that are based on actual real-life events. And so it is, it is a scary thing. And it is a really scary depiction of what the future could look like. I understand this person's grief and being worried about a Handmaid's Tale situation. But um, I don't know that that's, like, always the best comparison. Face yourselves, ladies. <laughs> I'm with you. I don't understand why this country hates women so much. I just don't understand it. No more joking about it being a Handmaid's Tale. It will be. They throw around Handmaid's Tale like we throw around 1984. Oh my god! <gasps> Brett Cooper! You and I are the same person, I swear to god. You are evil, Kelgore. Everything you can do, I can do 30 seconds before you, okay? I made that observation like seconds ago. Why are, why are these women so concerned with being able to get an abortion? I think she's calling them old. I think that's where she's going with this angle. Let me let me tell you a secret, Brett. It's not about them. They're worried. Listen, write this down. About other people. That was that was some great A snark of you. You little cunt. If they overturn Roe v. Wade, humans that possess uteruses should collectively get together and never have sex with men again. <laughs> I also hate this video, okay? First of all, humans that possess uteruses, never say that to me again. Like, I know that sometimes we, we accidentally repeat language that might not be ex in inclusive. I do it too. But like, we can just say people. We don't have to say humans that possess uteruses. Just stop. No birthing people, okay? We're not, we're not t pe people, people capable of birthings. We're not doing that. Misandry, which is like the hatred of men, is also... Not cool. Not a good look. Denying, like, people with people who possesses penises. <laughs> Denying them sex just because they have cum. <laughs> just because they have sperm. Not cool. Not Also not gonna happen. This is the lib horseshoe theory fucking um, big brain version of just be abstinent. Instead of telling telling people, oh, well, if you don't want a baby, you need to be abstinent. You need to wait till marriage and then have a fucking quiver full. No, instead of that, these like, you know, more feminist liberal women are probably out here being like, we should just deny men sex from our uteruses. That's abstinence, babe. We're not preaching that. People fuck. Also, to be fair, I'm pretty sure she's joking, but I, I don't agree. This will be the best way to protest this. Do you realize that you're kind of 
aligning yourself with pro-lifers right now, you're preaching abstinence. Ah, Brett! Brett, girl, maybe we should do a stream. I promise I won't call you butt pooper. I'm not as mean as Ethan. I'm way meaner than Ethan. But, um, so are you. And you could call me, like, smell more clout or something. You know what I mean? That's the best way to prevent an abortion. Just don't have sex. Don't get pregnant. So actually, lady, you're kind of being based. No, no. See, that's where we are different. I agree. She's preaching abstinence. Abstinence is not the answer. Almost immediately, there were protesters and counter-protesters congregating outside of the Supreme Court. And I'm about to play you probably the greatest video that I've ever seen. Don't lecture me. You're a man. I'm a woman. good it's so good hey i know you're an actress in hollywood i know you're on that show the heathers but you're not that good of an actress i'm sorry that wasn't very i didn't i don't think that you thought that that was that funny full disclosure i used to be pro-choice i was pro-choice with respect oh sure you were but the thing that changed my mind was the fact that in my personal life i valued personal responsibility and accountability for your actions personal responsibility is a fucking psyop to get you to fucking go to work. And anything. And when I applied that to abortion, I realized that I was completely being hypocritical because if I value that so much, but then I would be willing to just throw a life away because I didn't want to, you know, take accountability for my actions. That was incredibly wrong, incredibly immoral. And then, you know, everything else snowballed. I started learning a lot more, but that was the trigger for me. Individualism. That's what you're talking about. It's like you want everyone to have personal responsibility and individualism, but you don't want anyone to have personal autonomy. Make that make sense. Like you don't believe the government should do anything. You believe everyone should have personal responsibility, but you believe the government should take away people's ability to go choose whether or not they have a medical procedure. If getting an abortion is harmful to you and your personal code of ethics, I would avoid them at all costs. Explain personal responsibility and how you have anything to do with my choices within the scope of individualism. Anyways, thank you so much for sticking around. I have to go to work soon. God, this sucks. Oh shit, I gotta go to work like now. Okay, fuck, I gotta go. If you liked this video and you made it this far, please subscribe. Brett Cooper, stop. Okay, bye.